This show features adults using adult language. You have been warned. I can poke Joe in the eye if I just do this. He likes it, trust me. <laughs> okay. You're listening to Hammercast, the official podcast of the Hammer Gaming community. Hammercast is a weekly news and discussion show about the world of games, smashing buttons, clicking mice, shuffling cards, and rolling dice. Today is Wednesday, June 3rd, 2015, and this is episode 16. My name is Dwayne Sibley, and I am joined by your hosts, Mr. Todd Chartier and Mr. Joe Hollis. How are we this afternoon, gentlemen? Good. I'm doing good. Hello, world. Hello. Our first video version of our, our whatever cast cast thing and where can people find the video version if they're listening to the podcast uh we haven't decided that yet okay. you tell us Dwayne. Uh, i'll <laughs> tell i'll tell them in this spot here i'll drop right. it into the podcast oh i need to okay yeah right, right there on my screen you're both on top and i'm like this little bottom bitch todd's on the left Dwayne's in the middle and i'm on the right I don't want to be the sandwich. <laughs> I don't want to be on the left. Left lane always crashes. Anyway, so... Street Outlaws reference. What have you guys been playing lately? What have we been playing lately? Uh, we got uh, our lobies to 100 and wow. Right. And then abruptly stopped. Right. Um, the Minecraft server was reset, so I was playing around with that a little bit yesterday trying to play with shaders, and that didn't work because my computer wanted to melt itself through my desk. Nice. Yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that until I upgrade my computer. Um, but other than that, not too much. Let's see what, Rick, we got to start this magic of things soon. Yeah, oh. I definitely want to start doing that soon. Okay. Magic what about you, Dwayne? What have you been doing? What have I been doing? <sighs> No, seriously, what the fuck have I been doing? I have not been playing an awful lot of games lately. I was away last weekend, so I wasn't playing anything then. And I've been busy so far this week with work. I think I logged on to WoW once or twice. And, well, I did play a five-man game of Heroes of the Storm last night in celebration of the game's release. And uh, I was playing with my wife and a couple other hammers. And it was uh, it was a lot of fun, you know. Uh, we 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 give mobas a lot of shit around here, but Blizzard managed to make one that doesn't make me feel like an idiot when I lose. And trust me, we lo we lost a lot. We went zero and four last night, but it was now. Fun. Now, was it really fun, or was it just fun because you were playing with other people you know? I think it was actually fun. Like I felt like I was learning things as I was going, and you could tell each loss wasn't nearly as bad as the one before it. So we were getting better. And I and think I've that's what made things. it fun. I've learned things while doing unfun things. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, man, I shouldn't have had that Indian food last night. <laughs> and I learned something that day. But I wasn't necessarily having fun. You, so, you didn't learn anything that day. You keep going back for Indian yeah, food. It's delicious. That's the problem. Indian food is delicious. It's it's worth it. You need uh, Indian food away. Or like the Chipotle oh, version of Indian food. That'd be nice. Yeah. It's a terrible ring of fire. What? <laughs> burn, burn, burn. Oh. How about you, Joe? What have you been playing? Oh, I have Burns been up. playing games. Well, I leveled my <laughs> alt. <laughs> I leveled my alt with Todd. Um, uh, uh, I haven't been playing much of anything else, really. So, I, no, I no, no Town of play, Salem this week? No, I didn't play any Town, town of Salem this week. Um I'd I'd still like to get other people to play because it is more fun with other people. So well, well a whole bunch of us have tried it now. I, I I'm pretty sure we've gotten at least what is it one two three four. We've we've gotten at least five more hammers into it, myself included. So you know oh, we, we could get big old bang. Yeah, I I was there. The you were there the first time I played. How you drunk were there for were his you? cherry popping? Uh, pretty drunk apparently. I, I I see how it is. I'm just nothing to you. You're nothing to me. I thought it was Ishar, Kali, Genoey, and Dermoth. Were you there too? And and and, and me were you and there Tega, too? And yeah. <laughs> oh. Ouch. Okay. Yeah, I was the only person there who had names that were capitalized. Oh, oh you yeah, guys I knew it was me. I remember now because we were having trouble. I still don't think I have you on my friends list because it wouldn't work. 
shows you who your real friends uh, are. Yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to sit here and keep my mouth shut. All right. Well, let's go to the news. Uh, nothing really big happened today, right, gents? No, I didn't hear about any big news. No. Move on. No news today. Let's go Absolutely be yesterday. Nothing news. about Fallout 4. Wait, wait. Did someone wait. say Fallout 4? No. No, 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 no. I didn't skip that. It's like like Half Life Three. Oh. So it's just be funny if they just skipped three and announced Half Life Four. (laughs) I think people's heads would explode. But and speaking of making heads explode, yeah, Fallout Four is actually a thing. It it's gone from a thing that Bethesda really wished we'd stop talking about to a thing that Bethesda really wants us to talk about constantly until it comes out. Fallout 4 is now official. The website fallout4.com went live a bit earlier today. The game will be coming out uh, some point. We don't have a release date, but it will be coming out sometime in the future for PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. Uh, Matching up with all the rumors, it's going to be set in Boston, Massachusetts, which is kind of awesome. Are they all going to have Boston accents? I don't know. Boston. They better. Boston. Boston. They pack the card and have it, yeah. Yeah. But one of, one of the more interesting bits from the uh, teaser trailer that they released today was the implication that you would be accompanied by a canine sidekick. Well, you always do. You can always get a canine, yeah. Really? I don't know. Yeah. My canine sidekick over here looks. I. I never got a dog in Fallout 3 or New Vegas. <clears throat> there was I'm a, never having a dog in New Vegas. I remember in New Vegas there was a dog, but he could die and you'll never get him back again. Uh, and that's, there was a dog even in the first sad. one that I remember. You could have a dog companion, but he could die too, and then you'll never you get mean, him back again. When you say the first one, do you mean Fallout? Yes. Oh, like so like the top-down Fallout? Yes. Okay. As far as I can remember, they've always had a dog that you could find as your companion. Maybe this one you just start with it or something. I don't know. Cool. Hmm. Well, I'm hoping we hear more dog. about they, this at E3. Yeah, they put a lot of emphasis on the dog in the trailer. That's for sure. Maybe you play as the dog and the human's your companion. <gasps> that would be awesome. So it's the story of a dog and his, his pet two legs as they try to survive the... <laughs> <laughs> the post-apocalyptic splendor of Boston. Free me, minion. <laughs> I, I tough-looking minion. So I do have some news that I didn't put on the list. Um, as soon as this thing goes away, J.J. Abrams, yeah, yeah, might kill off Jar Jar Binks in the new Star Wars movie. This brought to you by our Jar Jar Binks section of the Hammer Gaming Podcast. He said, I have thought about putting Jar Jar Binks' bones in the desert. And it would just be kind of in the background. You'll see the bones of Jar Jar Binks. They won't elaborate on it. They won't mention it. But for anybody who's looking for it, you may be able to see a dead Jar Jar in the desert. Which I'm sad about. I think he should have been in the new movie. I think he should have been one yeah. of the leading roles. The protagonist. Antagonist. The prota- uh, yeah, I don't know about the yeah. protagonist. He should have been the antagonist. I hate you guys so much right now. <laughs> so this suck. is going to be our continuing segment of Jar Jar Binks news in the ongoing show. Eventually, yeah. you assholes will run out of Jar Jar news. <laughs> and I'd like to point out that you are fortunate. Fortunate. That you decided to turn on your webcam, Dwayne, because we were going to put up random <laughs> Jar Jar Binks pictures in your place. <laughs> okay. I may put one. Out. I may put one over it for a second at that part. Oh, gee, gee thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Superimpose Jar Jar onto your head. Let's Super see. Jar Jar. That's a funny big Jar Jar Binks. Uh, XCOM Two was announced this week. Uh, for mm-hmm. 2K and uh, Firaxis are going to be uh, coming out with XCOM 2. Is it 2K? I always get it wrong. Um, I don't know who makes shit. Yeah, I, I know, know Blizzard makes WoW. That's about it. <laughs> Bioware makes Mass Effect. 
I know Firaxis makes Civ and XCOM. Well, anyway, XCOM 2 will be coming out. It's going to be another uh, turn-based strategy game based around it saving the world from aliens. And if you look at the trailer, it looks like it happens in the aftermath of the first XCOM game that came out a couple years ago. And we lost. You know, there's a thriving human civilization, but there are aliens who run things. Kind of bleak. And instead of being the primary defenders of Earth, you are the resistance now trying to overthrow your evil alien overlords, Commander. Overlord. So you lost on the first one, basically. Yeah, so apparently you <clears throat> sucked. Thanks a lot. You know, we trusted you. We wanted you to save the world. We thought you had it all. And no, you failed. Because they didn't failed. send Commander Shepard. Yeah, that's it. Okay. We'll go with Sent that. him with that fucking warthog. The Reapers took the, over. The 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 Mako, not the warthog. Oh yeah, the Mako, the warthogs <laughs> from what Halo? Yes. Yep. See how much the, I hate it. I hate it as much as Halo. You will the, you will not say one foul word about my beloved Mako. Banshee. Banshee. What was that from? That was from Halo, Halo. too. <laughs> oh, see, I blocked it out. What I else? I have non non prehensile thumbs apparently. Uh, so we're we're big VR fans here on Hammercast, and the Oculus Rift has been announced uh, to uh, have a price point. They're saying, well, not an exact price point. They've basically said that if you have nothing, no no gaming PC, no nothing, nice. <laughs> okay, Jordy. If you have no gaming PC, no nothing, it'll cost you $1,500 to go from zero to Oculus Rift. And people are pegging that as $1,200 gaming PC, $300 gaming headset. So $300 price point. Are, are we going to get this thing on day one or are we going to wait for a price no. drop? I still got to try it. I got to try to see if it makes me puke. You got to see if the nose thing works. Yeah. Maybe they'll have, you know. um, maybe at stores like GameStop, you'll be able to put one on that hundreds of other people with uh, sweaty uh, eyes have worn. And um, it's all crusted with dead skin and conjunctivitis. Yeah, we're trying to, ugh. We're trying to get <laughs> some new ones um, at PAX in the PC room uh, in September, or actually it's late August this year. And if that happens, hopefully I'll get to try it to see if the newer ones make me sick or not. But, uh, you know, the last one did, as I've said several times. I still have a lot of questions about this thing, man. It's like, so they say, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, the requirements that it takes two HDMI ports. Is that true? Remember that? I don't recall. Well, I know we had that in last week's show notes. So I'll go ahead and look that up. So anyway, so it, it connects to the computer like a monitor. But does it have some sort of pass through so that I can still plug in my fucking monitors or do I need to have an extra video card? I think that's an important question. I mean, I always see people with it on their monitor and on their Oculus. It looks like it requires a single HDMI port, but two USB three ports for data. Wow. What the I don't hell are they sending that many... much data? I need to get a USB hub, I guess. Yeah, I just had to get one with all of my shit. So, so two USB three ports, but they need to be on separate buses. I mean, do they need the full bandwidth of each bus? There, no. Also, important question. Well, we can see here. Do, 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 well, you could look it up your damn self. Do, no. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really say what the USB ports are being used for. I mean, I can see it needing two ports, like maybe one for audio, one for, one for power, ancillary data to the headset. That would make sense to me, but like head yeah. tracking data. Yeah, right. But can I plug them both into the same hub? I don't know. You know, that's important because a lot of PCs don't have two USB buses right now. They right. Just have one. Well, maybe that's just mine. I guess mine's getting a little, a little older at this point. A little longer the tooth. Yeah. Sadly. Uh, speaking along the tooth, Wildstar is having their first birthday uh, this month, and they recently announced that they will be going free to play in fall of 2015. Now, we all played Wildstar for a while, uh, I want to say last year, shortly after launch, 
And it, it was a good game. It was a lot of fun. It just couldn't compete with the sheer inertia of people continuing to play World of Warcraft. Um, I think free to play is definitely going to make me want to go back and give this a try. How about you guys? You know, there's a couple of games that are free to play or have gone free to play that I've been interested in. It's just coming down to a time thing for me. You know, I barely have enough time to <clears throat> raid with the guild um, and that stuff than I do, you know, to go back and play. Like, I want to go back and play Lord of the Rings. That's all free to play, and there's tons of content for it. Right. But I just haven't, you know, been able to isolate the time to actually sit down and do it. And then, you know, we all know that I don't do any of that stuff alone, so I would need someone to, you know, go play with. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I don't know that the fifteen dollars a month was blocking me from playing it, anyways. You know, so I'm not sure that it going free to play is going to make any real difference for me. Whatever the entire group ends up doing on, for example, Thursdays and Sundays, is what I would be playing. The majority right. of our group still logs into World of Warcraft and does raids and whatever we do. That's our game that we group up to play. So. I don't know if that ever changed, I would just kind of... I think that's the biggest reason I'm still playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> True. Yep. Social inertia. Yep. Not necessarily game inertia to me. Like, every once in a while we get a few people who branch off and start playing another game, but the majority of our group is still in World of Warcraft, so we always drift back to that. Right. Because we get Ronery... Let's see. Rose. Steam's going to start. What? Oh, no, please oh. go on. Steam's going to start offering uh, video game refunds for, quote, any reason. People have been asking St Valve to offer refunds via Steam for the longest time, and for the longest time, it seemed like those requests had fallen on deaf ears. But now, as of yesterday, Steam will be offering video game refunds so long as it's within the blast, the, so long as within 14 days of the days of the time you purchased the game and you have played less than two hours total of that title. You can file a re refund request and Valve will return your money within a week through your payment method or failing that by dropping cash into your Steam wallet. This is kind of neat. What was I the time frame on it? List. Two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Uh, so you I can't go back and them. get refunds on every game I've ever bought and never launched? No. Sadly. <laughs> yeah. I'd probably own a lot less Steam games, to be honest with you. Yeah. Be like, hey, that looks really cool. I'm never going to play that. Let me get my refund. <laughs> yeah. I think, it, you know, the, I was thinking about this, and I think one of the the issues um, that I'm curious to see how they're going to deal with is, like, green light games, games that are pre-released, that kind of stuff. Just a lot of those games are sold kind of as is, not complete. Mm -hmm. You know, people are going to play it and go, oh, this sucks. It's not fucking complete and they want a refund. And it kind of defeats the purpose of Greenlight to me. But, well, um, you know, you pay your money, you take your chances, in my opinion. Well, in that case, most of the games usually have a price hike when they fully release. So if they get a refund on the reduced price when the game fully releases, now if they do actually want it again, then they have to pay the full price. And that's that's fine. I get it, but I just think that it's gonna it's gonna hurt the green light stuff a little bit. Yeah, but <clears> I don't know yeah. how badly Early access stuff. I can. Yeah, see I mean, I can't really say how badly, but it's gonna be an interesting ride for those guys. I feel bad for them. Well, they're they're definitely not the first people to do this. I know uh, GOG GOG used to be good old games. Offers a refund policy and. Uh, EA did something similar with Origin, I want to say, last year with their great game guarantee. You could request a refund within seven days of purchase or within 24 hours of launching it for the first time, which is kind of neat. Hmm. They still have that? That's yeah. Origin, you said? That's Origin, surprisingly enough. Hmm. Wow. Glad they didn't have that when SimCity came out. Origin right. still doesn't have a gifting option. You have to buy no. it and send the CD key to somebody. That's stupid. Well, it's because nobody's on Origin. <laughs> yeah, they just need to get their shit together and just put it on Steam. I mean, I know they don't want to lose the money to Steam, but I don't know, it's man. Like 90% of all the games I own are in Steam. 
Speaking of losing money to Steam, uh, it sounds like the Steam Summer Sale is going to start on June 11th. Uh, on the calendar, I'm, folks. Yep, yeah. put that one on your calendar. Make sure you have your uh, a copy of Steam or your Steam mobile app near you at all times because shit is going to rotate every day. What are your strategies for Steam sales, guys? Or is Not it just buying, buying everything in sight? <laughs> I've already seen... Uh, Assassin's Creed Unity go on sale for fifty percent off. Wow, still not worth it. I didn't get it because I still haven't played any of the other games anyway. So yeah, I can't think of any newer games that I don't own that I would want, and I'm pretty much full up on old games at this point. <laughs> There's so many games in my library that I haven't played that I could go back and play that it's not even funny. You could play a I've, new game every day for a year. Probably. <laughs> Starbound. If Starbound goes on sale, which it will, I'll Starbound? buy that. Starbound? That's the uh, Terraria-like one, right? T- yeah, right. Terraria and We were talking about it last you know, a couple shows yeah. ago. Right. I have it. I played it a well, little bit. I don't. On the what I've been playing, I played a little bit of Starbound. I, I got you got to uh, figure out mods and stuff, and then we can play together. Yeah. I, I made an iron helmet and then logged off. Okay. Well, first I found a uh, abandoned mine shaft, uh, made my house in it, and killed a few monsters. Uh, Guess it wasn't abandoned. Cooked some cooked some chicken, and uh, made an iron. You helmet. said monsters, not chicken. Well, monster you shoot chickens. a monster chicken out of the <laughs> sky, and then you get chicken. You get poultry. If regular Yeesh. sized chickens can't fly, why would a monster chicken? Like, I'm so confused. It was duck. Don't think about it How about hard. that? I ate duck. It looks oh, the same. Duck's delicious. Duck is delicious. It's speaking of like, It's like greasy chicken. Mm-hmm. Uh, chicken. Speaking of monsters, Take Two has indicated that Evolve is now going to be one of their permanent franchises. So they're going to come back and make Evolve expansions, Evolve sequels, and so on. So they're going to have four permanent franchises now evolve grand theft auto red dead and bioshock that, that's a pretty potent stable of titles there have they done anything with red dead redemption in a while not uh, in a while they plan on popular, coming back though. to that universe though i still see people never, playing red dead a lot so hmm. i have i don't play it i actually don't own that and it's maybe i'll get that in the steam sale yeah i have it on uh xbox 360 and it was very good it was very good. Hmm. Is it? What's the play style? Like GTA, but with horses. Yeah. Wild it's Grand West Theft GTA. Horses. Grand Theft Horses. Yep. Nice. We'll see. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know that I have time for another game. I don't even have time to play GTA right now. Do you have time but to feel like your computer? If I feel because uh, Windows 10 is coming out on July 29th. So it sounds like AMD was right when they leaked that shit. It's coming out May 29th, and there's, they're going to have uh, Xbox and PC streaming in the operating system, which is kind of... I thought that was interesting, yeah. That, that, was, that piques my interest a little bit, actually. <clears throat> that may get me to buy an Xbox. So that you could stream your PC games to your television, or so you could stream your Xbox games to your desk? Mm, yes. Yes. <laughs> Por, porque no los dos. All right. So July 29th, so, folks. Yeah. It's funny that AMD is the one who leaked that because who the fuck buys AMD shit anymore? I mean, they don't make people. a video card worth buying. Their processors are absolute shit. What's left? Yep, nothing. Right. You got it. You shrugged. I saw the shrug. If, it means if, you're, if you are budget Stupid. sensitive, they are still a decent shot. No. No, I don't even think so anymore. The oh. Intel Core stuff has really come down in price, and the lower end stuff. And you know, you can get a um, an Nvidia 750, which is you know not a bad card for what 120 dollars now. I mean, come on, there's no reason to be wasting your time on AMD. Their drivers are shit. I mean, people really stand by them, and they're you know like into it. They got a hard on for them or something, but. It's not worth the money anymore. It's just go spend your money on NVIDIA and Intel. And I hate to make them the only horse worth banking on, but fuck. I mean, none of the others are running the race. Well, okay, let's be fair here. When's the last time you actually used AMD drivers? 
um, not not too long ago. On what? I mean, uh, when I bought my Alienware X51. Oh, the, I, the laptop? No, my... Uh, oh, your desktop. My desktop here. I bought a top-of-the-line AMD video card, and it was absolute shit. Really? Yep. I literally ripped it out and mailed it back. And I never return shit. <laughs> I usually just give it away. And I said, nope, not even other people deserve this horror. Wow. Well, AMD, um, they've been getting a lot of flack about their games and compatibility with them. What was that new game that just came out? Was it The Witcher? Oh, Witcher 3? Witcher 3? Yeah. Where they Actually, had, like, it's, extra it's been hair. NVIDIA. It's been NVIDIA that's been getting the flack. Because right. well, no, it, no. NVIDIA puts out these... Uh, closed APIs that they make available to developers and then developers will write to them and then when the game tries to run on an ATI card it it runs like shit we lost Todd it's okay um well so I remember AMD got called out once when they said uh NVIDIA you know they're they worked too closely with this game and uh they made it work better with NVIDIA and not us. And then the developer said, well, we tried to get in touch with AMD. No one would talk to us, so we didn't work with you guys because you didn't want to. <laughs> so hmm. I don't know if that's yeah. a similar situation on Witcher. Uh, AMD is saying that they wanted to put in their own special hair uh, drivers, but they wouldn't. They went with NVIDIA's over them, so I don't know. I, I think everybody's calling conspiracy theory at this point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, here's the last piece of NVIDIA shit I have hanging around. You mean, you mean AMD. AMD? Yeah, sorry. AMD shit I have hanging around. If someone wow. wants it, tell me. I will mail it to you. And how can Just people to get, get it out of my you? house. Tweet me. Tweet. At? Uh, Dreger. D-R-E-G-G-0-R. Trigger. Okay. So That'll it, be. It's got down some here. serious hours right. booked on it, though, because I did uh, Litecoin mine with it. But um, <laughs> someone can have it if you want it. And I already gave away one of them. I had two, and uh, I gave one to Dermoth in the guild. Nice. So that was an eighty-seven something. That was a much better card. All right. Well, before we go too much further, let me go ahead and tell folks about our Hammer Gaming community, because without that, there'd, there'd be no HammerCast. Uh, the Hammer Gaming community is an adults-only group of gamers from across North America and Europe that play all sorts of games together. Hammer's been around since 2007. We originated as an MMO guild and expanded into a full community with our own forum, Minecraft server, and the podcast you're listening to right now. You can check us out at hammergaming.com. Dot this year's E3, which is in like a week or so. Yeah, a little over a week, week and a half. This year's E3 is going to have a, a new okay. kind of attendee. It's, it's going to have fans, <laughs> Thanks, which is really <laughs> odd. <laughs> Come wow. on, fans. So this year, the show will be allowing four to 5,000 fans into the Con LA Convention Center as invited guests of the various presenters. The, the bigger your booth, the more passes you get to distribute to your quote-unquote valued customers. Uh, what's this going to mean for independent coverage of E3? I mean, each one of these fans is basically going to be a, a little reporter who can blog, stream, YouTube, podcast, whatever, about what they see right there on the show floor. How do you guys feel about that? I think E3 is terrified of PAX. So the letting I think, end? I think they're losing ground big time. I think vendors are starting to realize that their money is better spent advertising directly to the public than it is to private shows like E3. And that's why this is the start of this. And I bet you it's just going to get worse and worse. Or more and more people. But that's my opinion. Would it be Joe? considered worse, though? I mean, I think it's a good thing to let in fans because you get more unbiased opinions. Yeah, I just think that the, um, you know, we used to look at E3 as the only place, the only thing, right? It was right. where everything took place. 
But now there's other conventions that the public can go to that are ten times more fun that uh, the industry is starting to spend a lot more money on. So, you know, I think the people who do E3 are starting to get a little concerned that they're losing ground big time. So, I mean, why would you go to E3 when you could go to PAX and get four days or three days of, you know, awesome gaming of all sorts when, you know, E3 is just, you know, it's much more closed-minded, in my opinion. Well, they only have to show it off to credentialed press as opposed to the public. Right. Yeah. And I just made a fucking mess like usual. What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> trying to do too many things while recording the show yes exactly <laughs> so with heroes of the storm out now uh you guys gonna give it a try yeah i'll play i mean i'd rather play with the group you know but uh i'll give it a shot well if i have time tonight i'll i'll poke you see if you're busy or not what's tonight tonight yeah tonight yeah, i actually i'm free tonight okay. um i have played a little bit i enjoy the game i'd be up for playing some sure I have never touched it, and I've only probably played about 20 minutes of any MOBA ever. <laughs> uh, I would definitely suggest that you take the, like, half hour and work your way through the tutorial missions just so you know what the hell's going on. Let's be honest. That's probably not going to happen. Yeah, if I you're, know. If you're going to start on a MOBA, I'd say Heroes of the Storm is the perfect starting MOBA. Well, there you go. Perfect. I can pop my cherry on a on Heroes of the Heroes whatever. Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, another Blizzard game. Yeah, that's all I need. Which I Does, doesn't seen. Blizzard like have all your cherries at this point? Yeah. How is Blizzard monetizing this game? Uh, they are selling individual heroes. So at any given time, you do not have the entire roster of characters available to you. Instead, they have a rotating roster of, I think it's either four or five free to play heroes yep. that you can, that anybody can just walk up, pick and queue as. If you want to have a character unlocked for you permanently, you have to purchase it. And this can be done kind of like the same way in, in Hearthstone, where if you really want to, you could spend real money on card packs. But if you were patient and built up your gold from doing daily quests and from winning games, then you could also use that gold to purchase card packs. Same thing in Heroes of the Storm. You can either use real money to buy heroes or cosmetic upgrades or what have you, or you could build up gold by actually playing the game and then turn that gold into unlocks. I actually did that last night. I, I bought uh, Malfurion Storm Rage for 2,000 gold. I didn't want to spend real money on it, but I, I had a, a decent amount of gold, and I like being a healer, so I bought Malfurion. So does he have different abilities? Yes, Every character plays differently. They, they so, are divided into an, a number of categories, but even within a category, multiple characters will play very differently. So would you consider it a pay-to-win model? Um, I wouldn't. I, I haven't played enough of it yet to be sure, but my initial, my initial feeling is that it isn't because they always have a decent blend of things available on the free-to-play roster from week to week. So you, you never feel like you are stuck with, say, five assassins and no support or no warriors to tank for you or anything like that. You, you, you've always got a little bit of everything, a little bit of melee, a little bit of range, a little bit of heals, a little bit of damage. You know, they're, they're keeping it so that you don't have to lift a finger or pay a cent. You just can play the game. And the longer you play, the more gold you get, the more gold you get, the more shit you can unlock without spending a cent. You only need to really spend money if you're impatient. There are some um, yes, cosmetic, we know that you're impatient. There are some cosmetic options that are only available for real money purchases. You cannot unlock them by playing the game, but they're just cosmetics. So there's that. But I like cosmetics. I like then, pretty horses. I want the unicorn. Okay, go do. The unicorn shits rainbows. You I want the really unicorn too. If it really shat rainbows, I might. Well, when when you ride on it, it trails a rainbow behind it like fucking Yan Cat, man. That it is fabulous. That is pretty fabulous. Hmm. All right, I'll add that to my uh, my buy list. 
<laughs> well, that'll be it for this week. Thank you guys, and thanks everyone for tuning in. Hammergaming.com slash hammercast slash 16 is where you can find show notes for this episode. We're Hammer Gaming on Twitter. Follow us, and you can get updates on when new episodes are available, as well as other news from the Hammer Gaming community. So, Todd, you told us we could find you at Dregger on Twitter. That's uh, D-R-E-G-G-0-R. Joe, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, Dazik LP, D-A-Z-I-K L-P on Twitter. And I am at Valthonis. That's V-A-L-T-H-O-N-I-S. Thank you all very much for listening and or watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye! Bye.